So today's episode, we're going to talk about Trump's pilots and competency-based training for pilots and how this is really, really important in the private jet world. We're going to be looking at what's been happening lately um, and, uh, yeah, and, and get really into it in uh, this episode today. My name is Fabrizio Pauli. I'm the founder here of Bishop TV. I'm an airline transport pilot and aviation consultant, also the author of the book, The Quantum Economy. Lots of information in here about private aviation. So now um, it looks like uh, Donald Trump's airplane diverted the other day for a hydraulic problem. OK, now uh, in my previous video, we talked about Trump's emergency landing. I talked about the QRH, the um, quick reference handbook. Now, this is the one for the 737. That's the airplane that I fly. Um, Donald Trump's airplane is, is a Boeing 757. So now when you have a hydraulic problem, now whether it's a leak or a failure of one of the systems, um, the parts of the aircraft that are connected to the hydraulic system, you've got the brakes, you've got the flaps and you've got the landing gear. So uh, obviously with brakes, you're going to need a bit more runway. If the flaps aren't working properly or they, they only extend to a certain point or they're not extending at all, you're going to need a longer runway. And then, of course, you've got the landing gear and the landing gear could have a problem coming out. But there is an emergency system uh, in order for the landing gear to um, uh, to come down. So um, what the pilots did, they looked at the situation and they thought, you know what, let's just go somewhere where there's a longer runway and a better infrastructure. Um, and that's exactly what they did. So they diverted They landed at a, an airport with a longer runway. Now, whether it was a brake problem, whether it was a flat problem, I don't know. That has we haven't been told. We may not even know and they may not tell us. Um, but the pilots did the right thing. Um, and this is really, really important. And the, and the other factor, and I did mention this in my previous video. And then someone said, oh, well, Donald Trump doesn't sit in the cockpit with these pilots telling them what to do. Well, I'm telling you something. You'd be surprised how many private jet owners try and tell their pilots what to do. As I always tell people when they buy an aircraft and I set them up with the pilots and that, I always tell them when you step on that airplane, the captain is in charge. I've seen too many people die because they let the boss take over. The reason you're, you've are you been hired to fly the airplane, you know, is that's your expertise. OK, now the boss is good at making money. OK, you're good at flying planes. So if I'm the boss and you're the pilot and you tell me we're not landing there, boss, today because no problem. Um, where can we divert to? Well, we've got these two options. OK, can we? And I may suggest it's better for me in my meetings if we go to that airport instead of the other one. And if the pilot says to me, that's no problem. We can go to the airport. The weather's good. The runway's good. We can go. Then if, then we go. Um, so this is kind of um, the thing. So Trump's pilots were very good. He, he just let them get on with it. They diverted. They made the decision. Um, and the reason why they made that decision is because these people were selected in the right way and they also trained in the right way. And here we get to competency based training. Now, this year in 2024, there's been 12 fatal accidents. 43 people died between turboprops and jets worldwide, business aviation aircraft. So when we look at the accidents and we see, you know, well, actually, what happened? Why did these planes crash? Uh, we discover that a lot of the crashes, most of them, has nothing to do with the training that the pilots do. Now, according to the FAA, the FAR 6158 PIC check, and even here in Europe, you know, a lot of the checking that's done, the training and the checking, OK, we need to do these 10 manoeuvres um, and they have to be within these parameters. And so in you go, one, two, three, four, five, nine, ten, tick the boxes, fine, you're good to go for another year. But when you look at the manoeuvres they do, you know, stalls, steep turns, uh, engine failure, you know, on the runway, engine failure at V1, which is critical um, speed. And then you take the problem up in the air. So you're basically taking off with one engine and you come round and they give you an engine failure as you approach. Um, and this is what it's a lot of the checking is all about. And a lot of the training is focused on that so that the pilots are proficient enough to be able to pass their check. But when you go and look at the, the accidents, the accidents aren't happening for these reasons. It's not that, oh, a plane stalled, he crashed. Um, his engine failed just after takeoff and so he crashed. No, when you look at the crashes, these aren't the reasons why planes are crashing. And this is why a lot of airlines now, and Boeing in particular, are going around the world giving lectures to over 100 customers um, and talking about competency-based competency, competency -based training um, or scenario-based training. And this is really, really important. But, you know, in the airlines, they fly a lot of people. They also, a lot of airlines have their own simulators. And the cost to train an airline pilot is a lot less 
than it, the cost to train a private jet pilot. And just to give you an example, today, if you bought a Boeing 737 and you wanted to send two pilots for their type rating, which is to qualify them to fly the airplane, it will cost you $15,000 a pilot. Yeah, one five thousand, fifteen thousand. Well, if you buy a Goldstream G five fifty, it's going to cost you more than fifty thousand, five zero thousand uh, per pilot. And then you've got the training they have to do every year. And a lot of private jet outfits send their pilots to training simulator once a year, not twice a year. And of course, the training is going to cost a lot more than if you were operating an Airbus A three twenty or a Boeing seven thirty seven, where the cost for tight rating on those two aircraft is about fifteen thousand dollars each. Instead of 50, 60, some of these private jets, the rating cost eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000. Okay? So it's really, really expensive. Why is it more expensive? Because they build less airplanes. Therefore, there are less simulators. You know, if you want to train on the 737, there's simulators all over the world. So that's why the price comes down. Also because the simulators are used more. And they got more. So, and a lot of airlines have their own simulators and et cetera, et cetera. So this is what's happening um, around the world. So... Uh, these 12 accidents have happened in business aviation. Um, the thing you have to consider is that the private jet pilot very often is flying in and out of airports where they haven't been before. Uh, so depending on the type of operation you have, you may be going to the three or four usual airports. I mean, when I was flying a citation in my early days for a private individual, uh, we used to go to three or four destinations. One was Milan, Nice. We used to do that nearly every weekend in the summer. And in the winter, we were going to Sion. In Switzerland, so you know, there are two airports that you know, well, Nice was an easy one, uh, Sion was a bit tricky, but you know, after you've been in there three or four times and you're going in there every weekend, uh, you, you know, you, you learn what to look out for, you learn, you learn the gotchas as they're called. Um, and then now and again, we go to other destinations, and you know, and, and some of these are small airports, um, and the smaller airports can be challenging. And so, your private jet pilot is actually going into more challenging environments and flying less than the airline guys. So what does that mean? That means that they need more training. First, you've got to select the right people and then you've got to give them training. And I know it's going to cost you money. I know that, you know, if you're going to do the tick the box training, it's going to cost you probably for the average private, large, larger kind of private jet, probably about thirty to $40,000 per pilot per year. But you want to be sending them to do these trainings twice a year and you want to schedule an extra simulator session every time they go. And in that session, they'll do the competency-based training. They'll do the scenario-based training based on the places where you go. If you're going to go in and out of Aspen a lot, let's build some scenarios around Aspen. Okay, what scenarios do we build? Let's look at the type of airplane you operate. Let's look at the various uh, crashes that have happened at that particular airport. And let's create some scenarios in the simulator so the pilots can fly these scenarios and learn. And then the other training, which I advocate all private jet pilots, not only private jet, but all pilots should be doing, is the upset recovery training. Now, it is mandatory here in Europe to do upset recovery training in the simulator on your particular type. But, you know, I say it's important to go out in an actual plane and do it. You go and fly upside down. This is something that, you know, if you are learning to fly, I highly recommend you go and do an aerobatics course. There are too many commercial pilots these days that graduate and go off and fly for the airlines and they're never flown upside down. They've never been in a spin before. And I think that's really important. I went through aerobatics training when I was doing my commercial pilot's license. Um, you know, I've been upside down and into spins and whatever. I've even been into spins with gliders and done aerobatics with gliders. Um, so that's something that's really, really important that, you know, if you're buying a private jet, you need your pilots to go and do the upset recovery training in aircraft. And I can help you organize all this. That's, that's part of the things that I do. When I help someone buy an aircraft, um, I also, you know, help them with selecting the pilots and organizing the pilot training. Um, but your pilots are, are more important than the plane. You know, these guys need to know what they're doing and they have to be trained and proficient. And that's really, really important. So Donald Trump's uh, demonstrated with what happened the other day that, you know, he select, he's got good people working for him and he lets them get on with it and make the decisions, the operational decisions with the aircraft. And I'm sure they go through a lot of training. Okay, training on a Boeing 757 is a lot cheaper than in a Gulfstream or in a Falcon 7X, uh, for the reasons I explained before. Um, but, you know, this is something that, that you know, it's a problem in, in that we have in private aviation, which is why in my book, The Quantum Economy, I talk about the safety record being 9.2 times worse uh, with private aviation than it is in the airlines. So, you know, if you're going to spend the money to buy the private jet so that you can join the quantum economy, as I mentioned in my book, you know, you want to make sure that your pilots are up to it 
and they're going to keep you safe. They're trained in a certain way. So you need to budget. OK, if the minimum requirement training says it's 50 grand per pilot, budget 100,000 and tell your chief pilot, OK, you've got more money for training this year. Go out and design the training, do the scenario based training, do the upset recovery training. It doesn't matter what it costs. You know, that's really, really important. And, and then you'll sit in the back and, you know, and nothing will happen. And then, and then the next thing we say, well, why am I paying all this extra money for training? Nothing actually happens. Well, because your pilots are so good that they manage to avoid certain situations. It's a bit like security. You know, you, you hire some security guys. The, the good security guys are the guys that will make sure that nothing happens because they play the prevention game. Well, it's the same with pilot training. Let's play the prevention game by doing scenario-based training, upset recovery training, and build that in to your pilot's annual training for your private jet. That's really, really important. If we're going to increase the safety record of private aviation and encourage a lot more people to come into private aviation, because, you know, as I always say, there's only, what, 24,000 private jets in the world? Okay, which means probably about 18,000 owners. Okay, and how many people can afford a private jet? Well, there's quite a few out there. It's probably over say 3 million people that could afford to fly private, whether it's a turboprop or a jet. Okay. Why out of 3 million people, only 18,000? Okay. Let's add the turboprops. So it's about 40,000 aircraft. Okay. So why only 40,000 people? Okay. Let's say 40,000 people out of 3 million. That number should be a lot higher. But as one conversation I had on, on, on a flight once coming back from Hong Kong, with this Swiss gentleman, we were sitting in, in business class and he had his own company making a lot of money. And I said to him, well, why don't you buy your own airplane? Why aren't you flying private? And he said, because they crash a lot. I'm flying Swiss. I know those guys up front are well trained. I know I'm safe. I know where my people fly. It may take a day extra or two for them to do a deal. But, you know, I know they're safe. I know I'm safe. So I'm not going down the private jet route. And you know what? He's actually right. I told a client a few weeks ago. He rang me up. He wanted to do some charters. He insists, oh, can we do these four charters for less than $100,000? I go out, look around. I only trust certain uh, operators. And I got him the flights for, I think it was $123,000 or something like that. And he said, oh, I've, I found them for less than $100,000. I said, okay, with who? And he mentions the name. And I said, well, I'll tell you this. If you want to go with them, you go with them direct. I don't want to be involved. I never recommend people go with that company they're dangerous there's an accident waiting to happen um if you are insisting to do this for less than a hundred thousand dollars i recommend you fly commercial don't fly private because the best i can do with you know those operators which i trust and which i know are safe is one hundred twenty-three thousand. we can't do it for less than that or what we can do is we instead of doing four flights private do two private and two commercial and then we can bring the price down. It's up to you. Uh, and then he decided to fly commercial. But, you know, so someone could say to him, well, you could have, you know, and that's what a lot of brokers do. They say, well, we've just got to get the deal done. We'll make a couple of thousand dollars on these four flights. We'll try and bring the price down. We'll use that operator because he's cheap. Um, and, you know, we'll get it for 98000 And off we go. No, safety is important. Safety is really, really important. And just because... A company has all the certificates doesn't mean that they're safe because the certificates mean that their pilots have checked the boxes, but the accidents aren't happening because of the maneuvers that the pilots have actually done and been proved to be competent at. The accidents are happening for other situations and the pilots aren't being trained for those other situations. So let's look at those other situations and let's train for those other situations in order for our pilots to sort of avoid getting into those situations, or if they do, they know exactly what to do. And that's really, really important. Donald Trump was safe on his flight because his pilots knew what to do because they were trained in a certain way. And that's the lesson here. It's not a political thing. It's not an endorsement of Donald Trump, okay? It's just an example. And he's not the only one. There are other companies out there. Uh, there's, there's one family in Europe, uh, the Swarovski, the people that own Swarovski, and they've been operating private jets for a number of years. Their pilots go to, I think they do three or four times a year they go to the simulator. Okay. The family don't care how much it costs. Okay. But their pilots train more than, than most other outfits because they understand safety. And they say, 
We spent the money for the planes. Now we're spending the money for the pilots. And that is the right attitude. That's how we are going to make private aviation safer. And that's how we're going to convince people like that gentleman I met on that Swiss that flight, the Swiss uh, flying from Hong Kong to Zurich. Um, how we're going to convince those people to actually go out and buy an airplane and fly private. And if those people go out and buy an airplane and fly private, they're going to be a lot more efficient uh, and they're going to be a lot more rested. Their performance is going to increase. They're going to create more business. They're going to create more jobs. They're going to create better products to improve this planet. So private, and I'm not saying this because I'm a private aviation guy. I'm saying this because I know, and I've told the story in the quantum economy, many people don't know. You know why Walmart is as big as it is? Because of private aviation. Jump on Amazon, buy yourself the biography of Sam Walton and read the story and you'll find out how private aviation helped him build that empire. And today, Walmart operate 30 private jets. Yes, three zero private jets. And it's not their top people that fly on them. So, and I tell the story in my book, The Quantum Economy. Okay, and I'm sure their training program is done in a certain way. So, that's all from me here on this episode of BizJet TV. If you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And if you haven't watched the episode I did on uh, Pilot Fatigue, Part 1, and Pilot Part 2 is coming, by the way, check out this video we did on Pilot Fatigue because that's another thing you need to look into if you're looking at buying a private jet or if you already have one. You know, make sure that your pilots are well-rested. And that's all from Fabrizio Poli here on BizJet TV, and I'll see you on the next one.